Read Excel data. Do an online search with Microsoft Power Automate Desktop. Scrape web results and write it back to Excel. It's so easy to do with Power Automate Desktop. Let me show you how. I have my data in an Excel book called Data. This sheet is sheet one and we have our company and CEO columns. Each row is a company and I want to find the corresponding CEO with a Google search and then I want to scrape the data and write it back here. So for example, the Microsoft CEO, I want to have it written in here, the Meta CEO here and so on. Let's create it in Power Automate Desktop and I'll show you how easy it is. So I click New Flow in Power Automate Desktop and here I can call it something. I'll say CEO Web Scrape. It's very important that you open up Power Automate Desktop yourself and do the operations with me. In that way, you will learn the most. First, we will create a simplification of the use case. That is, we will just create a static run to find one of the CEOs without the Excel thing. And then we will add in the Excel and make it dynamic so we can solve the whole case. We will do it step by step and I'll hold your hand, so don't worry, just click and type everything I do. First, I want to launch a browser, so I find a launch Microsoft Edge and drag it in. That's it. Here I can choose to launch a new instance or I could choose to attach to a running instance. I will launch a new instance because this is the beginning of my robot. I have nothing initialized, so I have no browsers open. I'll choose to launch a new instance. Then I want a URL. I can either choose to create a variable or just hard code in the address. I will hard code in the address for now, but it's often good practice to make variables. I go to my Microsoft Edge, take the Google here because that's the address where I want to go. Go back to Power Automate Desktop and paste it in here. The other settings we won't touch, I just click Save. Now I can run my automation. You have built a robot now that can launch a browser. Let's try to click Run up here. You'll see that we open up Microsoft Edge. Fine, this is working. So we um, will take on the next step. And the next step is to send some searches in here. Now you can see we have two instances open. So always whenever we build this robot, we will be doing the runs a lot because we want to test our robot, but make sure you just uh, close them down while we do it. We will need one because we will need it open because we need this field. That is where we want to type something in. So if I go back to Power Automate Desktop to type something in, search for a populate text field. And here you can choose between two. Form filling, that is for applications. Web form filling, that is for, yeah, web form, you guessed it. Drag it in here. We need to refer to a web browser instance. And you can see here that there's a browser in percentages sign. The percentages, that is just stating that it is a variable and it's called browser. And this variable was created automatically up here in the launch new Microsoft Edge. So whenever Power Automate Desktop recognizes that you are opening this browser, it creates a variable for you. That is fine. Then we need a UI element. That is, a UI element is simply just one element in either an application or a field in a web page and all the things you can see in your windows. Uh, that one, all those things have addresses which you can target. Here we just click this drop down. You can click add UI element. This one pops up. Here you can navigate around the page. We will have it here, but you can also do the things here. Nothing will get saved unless you press Control left. So we want to specify where do we want to send our text to. We want to send it to this search field. So if I press Control down, I left mouse click, you can see that we now have it over here. I click Done. We have a place to put in our text because we want to make it static. I want to just search for the Microsoft CEO first before we create the full solution. So then I just type in Microsoft CEO. Now I can click save. And one thing you might want to see if I open it again, I can double click to open the activities. This emulate, emulate typing. This is almost the go-to practice. It's default. 
It's a lot faster than normal typing, which will replicate what a human will do. But sometimes uh, we have to di disable it to have normal typing. But for now, it's very good. I just click Save. We can test our automation. And as I said, you saw before that we needed this window to be open because we needed to target the search field. But now we can close it because our automation, let me close the other one as well, because our automation will open a new window. So if I click Run, I will launch the edge and I'll do the search. That's fine. I just need to actually do the search, either click the button, the search button, or press enter. So we'll go back to Power Automate Desktop. I just want to send an enter click. To do so, find send keys here and drag it in. What do I want to uh, send? I can send in all sorts of keys. I can just type something in. I can even type, type in the short for the enter, that is return in curly brackets, or let me show you an easier thing. Click the drop down here with insert special keys, miscellaneous, and then find the enter. That's it, we created this one automatically. Now click save. So now we're doing our search. And let us uh, go back and close this because when I click run, the reason why we do all this, that is just to test our automation so we don't have to make 20 steps and realize that what we did was wrong. Now we are here and what we want to work with is this text. So this also makes sure that we are at the place where we want to be. So if I go back to Power Automate Desktop, now I want to web scrape the Satya uh, Nadella. That's this one here. So back to Power Automate Desktop. To do so, I'll just find and extract data. And I'm sure a lot of you came here to see how you do web scraping. This is how you do it. So I find the extract data from web page again on the web data extraction and I drag it in. Here I'm in the browser and now I just need to open up the browser where I want to scrape the data from. Well, that is why we keep them open and we make sure that we're navigating to the right place. This one opens uh, outside the window of this video. That's it. Now I can scrape all the data I want. All the data I want on this web page is actually possible to scrape. What do I want to scrape? I want to know the CEO of the Microsoft. Well, he's here. Satya Nadella, so I just can just hover over here, I can right click, then extract element value, and here I can see some things I can scrape. I can scrape the text, or for example, the URL attached to it, all, and uh, some other attributes. I want to just have the text, Satya Nadella. You can now see that uh, we have uh, lines, um, dotted lines uh, around it, that is fine. Satya Nadella, he's here, I click finish. This one will produce a variable with that name in and it will store it into the data from web page. If I click save here, let's do a simple log message. I'll choose a message box. I'll search for a display message. That's one was a little misspell. I'll search for display message and drag it in. Usually I use the display message for log messages or to pause my robots, uh, the working in my robots while I work at them. So in the development phase usually. I can choose a title. I will just have the results. It's not that not that important. We won't use this either just to, see, just to see that our robot works. To get the variable, click the X here. And uh, what do what variable do we want? We want this data from web page from up here. So click here. Double click the data from web page. It automatically gets this in here. You can see this variable because of the percentages sign. Then I click save. Now we created an automation that do a Google search and open the browser, do a Google search, scrape the results and present the data. That was almost half of our task today. So if I close down the browser, I run our automation again, we will just see that this works. It will take a few seconds and outside the window, this message box pop up. Great, we are done with the first uh, assignment. Now we got the intuition, we will add in the Excel module and we will make sure that it is dynamic. Let me close this one. Let me repeat what we're actually doing. So I want this Excel sheet, it's stored at my desktop in a folder and I want to read it and I want to do Google searches on all these company names and find the corresponding CEOs from Google and make sure to write it in here. To do so, let me go back to Power Automate Desktop. First thing we want, we want to launch Excel. So if I find a launch Excel, 
This is just to work in Excel. So here I drag in this launch Excel in the start. Do I want to launch a blank document or do I want to open up a document? Well, here I can either choose to select a file by the path uh, selector or I can just find it at my desktop. Mine was here. This is a desktop folder. It's called data and I can shift right click. This is a good trick. Shift right click. That opens up the copy as path. So click here. Let me minimize this again and just paste it in here. Control V. Remember to move uh, the quotation marks in the start at the end. Of course, you could also use it here. That's it. Do we want to have the instance visible? We can choose to have the Excel open or not while we work. Usually I will just have it closed. I don't need it to be visible. So I just untick this per default. Then I click save. Now we open it. An important thing is to close it again by the end of our automation. Otherwise it will get locked. It might not seem very important, but it is trust me always at a close Excel. Otherwise you will uh, pull your hair out of your head whenever your Excel sheet got uh, locked. So here I will close the Excel instance. That was the variable that got produced up here. Do I want to save or not? Well, that's fine. We want to save to make sure that we have every data we want. Then I click save. So now we open and closed it. We want to read the data before we can work with it. So to do so, let me show you the Excel sheet. Uh, to do so, we need to find uh, what range this is in. And we will uh, first we will find the first three column, that is this one, and the first three row, because we will use that one. So the first three column, this one, the first three row is this one. We can find it with Power Automate Desktop. And to do so, find a get first three column row, that is this one, drag it in uh, beneath the launch Excel. Here, this one will just produce two variables. It, we don't have to write it any more info. It will read from the Excel instance variable. That's it. We have found the first three column and row. Now we will use those two things to read our Excel sheet into a data table. And to do so, we will find a read from Excel worksheet. That is here. Drag it in. And now we will take advantage of the first three column and row. We will read from the Excel instance. What do we want to retrieve? We want to retrieve the value of a single cell. No, we want a range. We want the values from the range of cells. Then we want the start column. We want the start row. Now we need an end column and row. And we actually got the end column and row almost by our first three column because the end column, that is one before the first three column and the end uh, row, that is one before the first three row. So to do so, just uh, click this variable here, that is the column, that will be the first three column. Click this variable again, the first three row. Now we just need to subtract one from these two. To do so, inside the percentages, say minus one. Inside here, say minus, sorry, that was half, minus one. That's it. We can click save. But uh, before we do so, always check the advanced here, because if I go here, I can say first line of range contains column names. It does. It, it contains this company and CEO that, uh, that, is, that are headers. If we don't specify it here, we will, have a, we will have an error in our workflow. It will not perform the action that we want. It will have skewed data. So if I click save here, now we have read our Excel. We can start by iterating through each row of the Excel sheet. To do so, find a for each here. That is a loop. And uh, where do we want to place it? Place it just beneath the launch new Microsoft Edge. This for each will run over our data table one by one until it end. So what value do we want to iterate? Well, we want to iterate the output variable that we got from up here, Excel data. That was from the read from Excel worksheet. So if I click here, Excel data, double click it. It produces a variable called current item. And this current item, that will be, uh, whenever we iterate through, this one will be the current item, this row, then this one, then this one, this one, this one, and this one. So a lot of current items, uh, that's fine. I click save. Here we have our for each, uh, start and end. The best practice is always to go to a, the end of, so whenever we make these transactions, we have eight transactions here, the eight Google searches, we want to make sure that we are in the same place for each iteration so we know that we can perform the actions without an error. So we want to be at the front page of Google. To do so, I'll find a go to web page. That is here. I drag it in. 
uh, I want to be in the browser, that's fine. I want to navigate to a URL, I will just type in the Google. Here we could have used a variable if you wanted, but it's fine for now. That's it. So we navigate to Google. Then we want to do the search, that is the populate text on web page. So if I move it up here. Here we, we make a static Microsoft CEO. So this one will just give us seven Microsoft CEO searches. We want to change that so it will do searches from the Excel sheet. Let me double click here. So instead of the Microsoft, I'll delete that. Now I'll refer to my current item. That was my current row. So I click here. Then I'll say current item. That is this one. But I want to refer to this one will just refer to everything here. I want to refer to the company column. That was the uh, that was where I want to do the search. So to refer to a column because I know I'm the current uh, item. That is each one of these row. I just wanted to refer to the company column. And to do so, so inside here in the current item, make some hard brackets, start, and I always like to make the end as well. Then inside it, I want to make a single quotation mark, and I want to make another one, and inside that. So now we have everything around it in place, we can write whatever inside. I just run to write company. This one targets the company column of the current item, and then it says CEO, that's fine, we save it. Then we want to do the return key. Uh, well, that was what we did before as well. We also want to extract the data. So let me drag that up. That's fine. Instead of displaying the message, we want to write it to Excel. And to do so, I'll just find a write to Excel worksheet here and drag it in here in the end. Now a little tricky part comes, but it's not that tricky. So just make sure you pay close attention. We will write to the Excel instance. What value do we want to, to write? We want to write a data from web page, which we just extracted. So if we go over here, we can uh, take the data from web page. Then we want to write a specific cell. The column, well, we want to write into the second column. That is this one here. But we need an integer as well. That is whole numbers for the row. And we don't really know. So we will create a variable that will tell us. So uh, if I just click save here, this one will give us an error. That is fine. We will fix it in a few seconds. So here I'll set a, a variable just before the for each. I'll set a variable that holds the start value two, and then we'll increase it by one whenever we have done an iteration of our for each. So here I will say set variable and drag it in here. So it will be called new var, that's perfectly fine. Feel free to rename it if you want. And that one will have the start value of two. That will be our row number two because we have headers in our Excel. So this one uh, will say two. And then uh, in the end of this loop here, we will have an increase variable that adds one to this. So if I go up here, I'll have an increase variable, drag it in in the end. The variable name, that was the new var. So click the X here. Then find a new var in the end and increase by one. That's fine. Now we can use this variable here in the write to Excel worksheet so we don't have an error. That is this one here. Click the X, find a new var, double click it, and we will use that. So, and we can, because we write, we are writing to this Excel worksheet here, we can choose to delete this display message. To do so, just right click, click delete. It's outside the window, but it's all the way to the button. That's here. We have now created our automation. Let's just save it to make sure that we actually have it if something breaks. And we are saving our flow and then we can run it. Then we can run the automation. We click run. Um, Power Automate Desktop will make seven iterations. That it will be our seven Google searches. And here you can see that we are navigating to the google.com to make sure that we're doing the Google search from a blank Google page, which is important. It's very important when you build the robots. Also, when you work in applications, always make sure that for each iteration you do, go to the front page. Here we go, we're done. If we go to Power Automate Desktop, we can see we're done here. I can drag in the... Uh, data here, I can open it. And here you can see we scrape the data. What happens if I add a row with a non existing CEO. So if I go here, and I can say insert, then let me just delete these ones here. Then I can just say company on a Jensen org like this. And I choose to save it. So if I run it now, we will have an error here because Anas Jensen Org won't ex uh, will not exist as a CEO. Let me show you how to counter that. 
So go to Power Automate Desktop. And while this will give an error because that company doesn't exist at Google, our whole automation will stop. And to have prevent that, we will have an unblock error. This is a very important concept of Power Automate Desktop and RPA development uh, overall. What do we do when our robot fails? Well, this is not a fail in the system. Our hardware, our browser is working fine sorry, our software, but we will uh, we will have an error in the data. This is a business exception and that is perfectly fine. So if I ch drag this unblock error in, drag it uh, just uh, below the send keys here, we can give it a name. I'll just say CEO don't doesn't exist. Call it whatever you want. This is just a name to make it easy visible what it's doing. So this uh, block here, whenever uh, something happens, it will go to the end of the block. That is the exception handling mode. That is fine. I click save. Now I have this unblock error. So where can I have the block? Where can I have the error? That is in the extract data from web page. I drag this one in. And uh, I will also have this right to Excel worksheet because if we have an error here, I want to jump over this. So I just drag this one in. So now I can run it. This one will get handled by my error handler. I will make a lot more error handling. Just make sure you subscribe to the channel to get all the new Power Automate desktop videos that will come in the next month and going forward. So now I can run it. And let me show you what will happen. Because if I click start here, we will now have eight iterations. We will also open up anasjensen.org, which is, by the way, my handle on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever. Just go, you can go search for it and follow me there. Now you can see it, uh, this one doesn't exist, but our robot will run. It doesn't scrape anything because it can't find a CEO, but it is not giving us an error. That is fine. Here we go, we can inspect our data. So if I open up the data, that's it. You can see here now we just jumped over on a Jensen org and didn't write anything. We'd also write an error message. If you have any questions, just type them in below. So what you want to do now is to take the full Power Automate course that will teach you everything about Power Automate. You can click in the video in the middle to get to it.